<laughs> yes. <laughs> Miss Piggy's way too loud. We need to build some damn doors. So when we built the room for Miss Piggy, we envisioned putting in doors. We just haven't got around to it, but now is the time. I just picked up a bunch of red oak and I've got a really cool concept for it. But before we get into any of that, we actually have to build the jam because we don't know how big the doors are until we have a jam to put the doors in. So let's do a little bit of basic woodworking. Some milling, some drilling, and some killing. We come to hang recently? No, but I am hungry now that you mentioned it. Let's go. All right, my good people. I've got a rough stack of red oak here. We're looking at what I what they said is eight quarter. It's a little heavier than two inches. And we're gonna use this to build our door. This thing's gonna be hefty. I'm gonna cut everything down to rough parts here, and then we'll go over to the jointing and milling machines. Here's a quick tip for you. If you're cutting your parts down to size or slightly above what you what you should be doing in the rough, bust out a jigsaw. Don't bust out a circular saw. The blade in a circular saw is much more likely to grab, and because everything's not square, it gets to be a little bit more dangerous. Always grab your jigsaw. And if you don't like that, I uh, have a parking lot and we can fighting it. Well, let's rip. We had to pause real quick. I'm building the door because we can finally get our tree off. I am not buying one of these. There we go. We're going to be able to get that tree out. Here, hold on, we can make that work. John won't admit it, but I'm right. That's what we need. Yeah. Oh, I looked at it. About 30 grand. And as the beautiful documentary of a wonderful life of a pig once said, that'll do, pig. Why a long face? As we always tend to do here, I done messed up, A.A. Eh, eh, Ron. You done messed up, A.A. Eh, eh, Ron! So, I glued these panels up this weekend with Jordan. I bought enough material thinking we were good. This is 34 and 3 quarters inches wide and 82 inches tall. The drawings that we built the doors in had 8 inch wide rails and styles with a 10 inch foot. It was 4 less inches on the interior here. Well, this is 35, so it would have been 31 and we would have plenty of size. And then this is 82, which would have been 78, plenty of size. But as it stands, that panel fits exactly because the material didn't yield the eight inch parts that we wanted. We only got sixes out of them. The easiest thing to do is just kind of shrink the jam down an inch on each side. And then we should still have a nice half inch rabbit the whole way around the interior of the door for the panel to sit. But once again, we done made a boo-boo and we're gonna have to get squirrely. Measure eight times, cut twice, then call someone, complain, and then eat something because we're hungry. Okay, let's cut these parts down. Now that we've shrunk things down, you've watched me make doors before, which if you haven't, we're not friends anymore. I like to make my doors with dominoes. I'll lay my door parts out and then I'll domino the door together and then route my panel groove. I saw this on the internet like six years ago. It's super fast and works really easily. And yes, the internet was around six years ago. Jordan's here. What's up? It's been a dusty day in the pig pen. You don't have a hat on, that's why you look weird. I didn't hear anything you said. I don't think I want You got any complaints today? I'm hungry. We are mocking the door up before we cut our groove. Sam and I oversized and then way undersized the dominoes. But one thing we like to do is put our dominoes in one side so they're like a tenon. They become basically an integral tenon. Kind of looks like a wrap of ribs now. All right, so next step is we have to route the panel groove. Excuse the noise, we're working in here. And you can see we have this slot cutter bit with a ball bearing on it. So essentially what happens is this bearing runs on the inside and the slot will sit down to the depth that I'm looking for. You get you know, your perfectly interior parts and we'll cut the panel to fit inside. I glued some panels up over the weekend. Those are all ready to rock and roll. So the next thing you need to consider when you're using this method to do your interior door panels is that there's gonna be a rounded edge. Look in here, you can see how that rounded out. So we found a washer that matches the radius of our cutter head. So we're just gonna trace that, round these off, and then we'll route our rabbit. They're fresh out of square router bits. We know well, who to blame. The, he's at the router bit store. Let's let him deal with that guy, he's miserable. I completely forgot I had this. This is perfectly parallel. Doing a little bit of uh, chamfering to help this go into the groove. Then we're gonna mock them up and draw what's gonna be an awesome power carving, I hope.
Okay, that's one. Halfway there. I think there's the other one over there. Yeah, why, you don't like the tall? My vision here is I want the doors to close together and then look like a tree. So I wanna take a quick second to let you guys know why we're actually doing this. For the most part, it's to enclose Miss Piggy, but more importantly to myself and to Sam is Jordan's safety while in that room. Jordan came to me recently and has been attacked physically quite often lately. And because of that, he doesn't feel safe. And we want him to feel safe. So we built him a room and now we built him some big doors. But you know what else isn't safe when it comes to Jordan? His online security and that's why this video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. If you're curious on what Surfshark VPN is, it's a virtual private network where you can log in basically from anywhere in the world almost and protect your personal data. You can change your location, say if you wanna log into Netflix or look at some weird stuff that you don't wanna tell your friends about or play video games in a different country. It's also a great way to keep your privacy private. Say for instance, you're in an airport or you're at a coffee shop or something and you want to make sure no one's stealing all that precious information off of your laptop, well, a VPN is the perfect way to do so. If you're interested in being as safe as Jordan's gonna be when we're done with this room, hit that link down in the description, use code Malecki, and save 83%. <laughs> yeah, I said 83%, and get three months free from Surfshark VPN. Thank you for sponsoring this video, and also thank you, Jordan, for becoming a safer person. Now, let's get back to being awesome. I'm gonna draw it out here, and then what we'll do is we'll remove the panel, I'll rough carve it so it's not so big and bulky, and then we'll put it together, I'll kind of finish the carving. We'll glue that thing up, sand it, and square it, and do all that kind of fun stuff. While it's on the floor here, it's kind of outline a tree, huh? What kind of tree would you like it to be, Jordan? I would assume it's gonna be a red oak tree. I'm gonna make it a weeping f***ing willow, I'm gonna cover it in Jordan's tears, what do you think? This company got real hostile, I'm going to eat Real that. hostile. Also, haven't eaten today, and I'm incredible. Ah, oh, that's what it is. Just not feeling the wood cutting thing today. You live at whiny when you're hungry. So we're gonna take the door that now has a tree that kind of resembles a tree drawn on it apart. I'm gonna carve the interior panels first. I'm going for a look on the edges here where they die into the uh, styles. And then I'm gonna cross over in the center of the tree. So because I've never done anything like this before, like I typically do organic carvings and this needs to actually look like something. I'm gonna start out by outlining it with a, this is a bullnose bit and it's probably like a quarter inch depth. It'll give me a little bit of room to still carve down. Essentially, it's just gonna set the depth of what I'm gonna carve to. Here goes those two days of work and nothing. Give this a shot. I love that Jordan's wearing a different hoodie in every shot. He brings more clothes to work than a woman. I have a special sweatshirt when I know I'm gonna be laying on the ground. That's the sweatshirt I put on. I have one for metal work. I do too, it's called the one that I'm wearing. So now that the door is semi-assembled, I can ease into the parts that I'd, I wanna kinda bring into the rest of the shape. So down here I want it to look like the foot of a door, but I wanna keep this like juxtaposition of the outside. I do have to bring down this panel a little bit. I will use the more gentle carving tools. I think it should work, I don't know. I'm literally making this up as I go. Doors are pretty much sanded. I have absolutely no voice because Workbench Con Karaoke will get you. I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind. But they're far enough along that I do want to get them glued up to continue working and refining the design of the carvings on top of them. That's going to be next step. Then we can let them rest overnight. I can get back to them tomorrow. Give me that glue. So I'm gonna start trying to lay out hinges and eat cheese crackers because I'm hungry. So I'm gonna sand things and- uh, There are more carving to do. Let's tag team it up. We're going with a ball bearing hinge, just like your regular hinge, but it has uh, two ball bearings. In it. They hold the weight a lot better. So we're gonna go with two of those on each. I tried to do four, but I literally spent the whole morning trying to find the hinges. I went to Home Depot three times, Lowe's once, and Tractor Supply once, and we think we can make two work. Worst case, I'll take it apart and I'll add four. I made this little jig. It's the exact same size as the hinge. Well, hey friends, Sam made the jam the wrong size. Should I make a slight alteration? It'll be fine. 
they kind of resemble doors. I don't know why we keep making double doors. It's literally the hardest thing. Chairs might be harder, but making double doors and a custom door frame jam is extremely difficult. Morale's low. What I did yesterday was put the mortises for the hinges in the jam. Now I made what we're calling a story stick, which is basically just a physical representation of your layout. So that way when you have to duplicate it over a couple places, your measurement skills don't fail you. We're gonna do that. I'm gonna cut it all the way through because it's a symmetrical flippy floppy kind of thing. Got the router, we're gonna continue to be awesome. Good luck, have fun. I don't know what it is. I've mortised hinges for doors many times. Terrifying, every time. I got a router, check, double check. In words of our forefathers, there ain't nothing to it but to do it. Here goes nothing. So Jordan is now Michael Jackson. Luke Skywalker. Michael Jackson. Not as cool as Luke. The doors are prepped. We couldn't find literally any more ball bearing hinges in our area. So we ordered some more, but for the sake of this video, we've got two of the hinges mortised in, both the door and the jam. We're gonna pre-hang these to make sure everything fits before I go into final finish and prep, just because I want to not have to deal with fitting issues once we have finished on the door. So this should get squirrely. It's pretty awesome. They're pretty close. I like it so far. Now that we know the doors fit, I'm coming back to our die grinder with a cut saw burr on it. That's what this sucker is. And the wheels. If you've been curious, this is literally how I've been carving. It's how I carve most of the things that I carve. These are awesome because they're like abrasive. They're not taking chunks or chips out of them. Big fan of these. We're gonna add the veins for the tree now and I want these to be nice and subtle and then easy to sand. And I think after that, it's just sanding and then finish for this sucker and we'll be good to go. All right, so we're gonna go a little stain on this because it's red oak and not white oak. If it was white oak, never stain. Early American stain, get this thing stained tonight, sprayed tomorrow. On the flip side, I think I can build a little bit of depth with the stain itself. So I get this back done first and then we'll move on to the front. Here's what we got going on. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a little bit of black dye, just like a tittest of bittest. And then I'll hit these inside seams just to darken them slightly, but it's all still wet. So essentially I come back and I just rub this in, just mixes the stain colors in the wood. So what we're doing is just outlining the tree essentially. Oh, it looks so cool. Pop. And then the deeper carving up here comes to be. So one more door, then she gets sprayed. It is time to finally put finish on something in the shop that is worth being finished. And for that, thank you, Total Boat. Halcyon it is. Let us spray. Move that bus. Hey. Nope, that was kind of dumb. Back on the soft horses. We're so excited we forgot the hinges. Uh, let's try this again. Whoever decided to eat all that food for lunch is an asshole. All right, throw that thing on sticks, man. Holy shit, it looks like a tree. God, it looks so good. It's like, at least in the top half of things you've made. I've okay. seen you make some pretty terrible things. I feel like this one didn't take you as long to carve either. Up a little more, Jordan push it forward. Yep, right there, open the door. Oh, hope it still closes. Oh, ho, 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 it actually came out rad as hell. Subtle enough, but still awesome. All right, so because we're not putting latches on this, we would do door handles, but because of the way we work in the shop, when we do doors like this, we like to be able to like bump them with your ass and open them. And these little stops allow us to do that. So this just gets recessed into the top of the door. And there's a ball bearing here that has another plate that it'll sit in on the other reference surface on top here. So we'll install these and that should keep the door shut. And after that, one more thing we wanna do. So don't go anywhere. All right, so our friends at Be Quiet sent us over some sound dampening stuff that usually goes in cars. We're gonna fabric cobble, because that's what we do. We left the interior of these doors unfinished so that we could use this sticky back here and stick this up on the interior of the door just to try and help a little bit with that sound dampening. As you guys recall, the soundproof room definitely is not soundproof. We could take all the help we can get. This should be it though. I think this is the last thing.
do have a surprise for the boys. Go inside the room. Don't come out until I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no more dog. Oh, this is definitely not a one-man job. No. No, then it ruins the surprise. Shit. I don't know how that works. You guys are gonna hate this. We're they gonna love it. All right, come out and take a look. Oh! You finally have your slab lap. Hell yeah. It's it's so much bigger. That thing's cute. It looks slick though. Before we go though, here's some buttery B-roll. Oh, and that's gonna be a wrap on this one. I'm not gonna say anything else except for subscribe because we're building handles out of axes and if we can, we're gonna forge them. See you then.